welcome. This is Mantega, California. This is the Boys and Girls Club. And this is the Cult of Nothing. Here comes the Cult of Nothing, a very demonic, violent trio here in TWF. And stepping foot into the ring in this particular circumstance will be Andrew Arch. We're in Manteca, California. Last week on this program, Andrew Arch had an epic, crazy Lake County street fight against Brandon Humphrey. Came up a little bit short, and he has been in a foul, foul mood ever since that match. Retribution tonight, just maybe. Well, here's what I referred to earlier. Ever since that defeat last week, Andrew Arch has been absolutely living. Staring across the ring from Andrew Arch this evening on this episode of TWF, Maisie Gildar, quite possibly the most odd competitor we've ever had around here, never utters a word, never speaks. He has happy faces in his mouth every second of every day. Oh, oh, okay. Well, real quick, if you want to book a show, COVID is ending, live shows are starting. Private parties, birthday parties, bring the action to your town. Facebook.com slash the TWF for more information on bringing this pro wrestling thing to your neck of the woods. Well, let's do this thing. Let's let the action go. This is some pre-COVID action from Manteca, California. Boys and Girls Club opening contest. One half of the tag team champions, Andrew Arch versus Maisie Gildark. Odd, strange, unusual, whatever adjective you want. And Andrew, the taller of the two, muscles him into the corner. And the disrespect with that slap. Come on, man. Well, Andrew Arch with a creepy laugh former TV champion as well. Utter disrespect from one third of the cult of nothing. Tag titles are not on the line here today. Singles competition for one half of the tag team champions. He can't believe his misfortune of last week. Lost that street fight to Brandon Humphrey. But here he is back in the saddle this week, able to break up that waist lock. Hammerlock now floats over into the headlock. More experience than Gildark. More ring time. That doesn't necessarily equate success when you're facing someone as unusual as Maisie Gildark. The guy is absolutely unpredictable. Well, there's a chop of his own. And, and Arch just laughs it off. Oh, now it's his turn. Wow. Echo throughout the Boys and Girls Club here in Manteca, here in the 209. Snapmare followed by a very, very vicious kick to the spine. And Arch is taking control. Is he biting him? Is he biting him right on the forehead? I mean, it's illegal, but you got a five count. Nice clothesline sends him down from that seated position. Here's a cover. Only two. Maisie Gildar trying to shake off those cobwebs and do something. Well, you picked a great hour to watch what we do. Later on in this hour of action, you will see the TWF Championship contested. The newly crowned champion, Stephen B. Smith, goes one-on-one -on -one with the leader of the cult of nothing, Michael Nothing. Could it be the night? Oh, could it be the night that the cult of nothing gets a stranglehold on the top title in this company? Well, there's that seated clothesline one more time, excellently executed by Andrew Arch. Both men to a vertical base now. Hit him back! Hit him back! 
Oh, stiff shots exchanged by both individuals. Maisie Gildar. He won't say a word, but he'll punch you in the face. He'll forearm you in the jaw. And the sounds echo throughout this building. Shoved in the corner now. What's Arch thinking? What intensity. And a third time. Wow. After three assaults in the corner, follows it up with a bulldog. He might win this thing. Well, Maisie Gildar gets that right shoulder up just in time. Talk about intensity. There's that combination that ends with the bulldog one more time. Gildark is hurting. Gildark is down. Kick to the skull. Not many athletes the height of Andrew Arch could pull that off. Shows the flexibility and the versatility of a former television champion. And then a running knee to the face. Absolutely nothing fancy about that, but very brutal as he inches his way towards victory in his estimation. If these people get what they want, he's going to lose just like he did last week. One more stiff kick to the there, skull. How you doing, little buddy? And Michael Nothing, the leader of the Cult of Nothing, unimpressed by the effort of Maisie Gildar, doing everything he can on the outside. Yeah, you hear that sound? That's the sound of a knee on flesh, a knee on skull. And both men to a vertical base now, but Maisie Gildark obviously is taking the brunt of the punishment so far. Reversal. Nice forearm. And slams him face first into the second turnbuckle. This might be time to end this thing. Look at this. Modified Anaconda Vice. Andrew Arch has got absolutely nowhere to go. Oh, come on. Momentary distraction of the referee by Michael Nothing. And then the possibility of interference made him relinquish the hold. Oh, fireman's carry. Wow! What a running lariat executed by Arch. And this thing is done. And Andrew Arch prevails with that very vicious running lariat. It's a victory for the Cult of Nothing. Back on the winning track here this week on TWF. I don't know what scares me more. What scares me more, the violent potential of this group or the creepy laugh of Andrew Arch? But right here, it looks like he had it. Center of the ring, modica, modified anaconda vice. Michael Nothing just distracts the referee momentarily. Maisie Gilgard breaks the hold because of the possibility of interference. And then Arch absolutely mows him down with that running lariat, one, two, three.
We've only won once. We got the tag match jump later. Gonna win that too. And then I get a title shot. Guess what's gonna happen? Guess what's gonna happen? Do you see? Do you see a trend? Do you see the trend? We're gonna win again! We're gonna take the goal! Three waste of gold! I just had a goddamn thing. Not a goddamn thing. Be all you want. Don't give a damn. I'm bringing on the gold. And the three of us will go home as champions. Always remember, you can fight us if you want, but it's all for nothing! Oh, ominous words by all three members of the Cult of Nothing. Well, there's our main event right there. Fancy graphic and all. Stephen B. Smith versus Michael Nothing for the TWF Championship later tonight. You like the live pro wrestling? It's back and in full effect. We're all getting vaccinated. Boom. June 12th, 2021. Moose Lodge, 15910 Moose Lodge Lane in Clear Lake Oaks, California. Doors at 6, get yourself something to eat. Bell time at 7. 10 bucks online or 12 bucks at the door for adults. You got to join us live and in Clear Lake Oaks. It's always a great time in the 707 up there for everyone involved. And then we move on. July 17th, 9 p.m., 21 and over show at the Pub and Tap House in Manteca, California. Only $10. Join us live and in person. Rowdy good time for everyone at that great venue. And then the big one, the monstrous one, the enormous one, the mania of Rio. Rio mania comes to Sacramento, the Colonial Theater, April, I'm sorry, August 14th, 2021, 3522 Stockton Boulevard in Sacktown. Doors at 630, showtime at 7, 10 bucks online, 15 at the door. You're going to show up for the biggest event in the history of big events that we call Rio mania. Well, this is Manteca, California. This is the Boys and Girls Club, an absolutely tremendous organization. We thank them for letting us host live pro wrestling several times each year. It's always a great time for the kids and the wrestlers. Outstep Samoan Sap, outsteps 400 pounds of Samoan Fury, outsteps a former television champion of this company. And I mentioned that title because this match is for the TV title. This match is for a title held by CJ Dirt for around two years. Can Samoan Sap be the guy to dethrone the suplex and red Mexican? I guess we'll find out in mere moments. Well, let me remind you, if you'd like to advertise on this show, we're flexible. Get these wrestlers some gas money. Total Wrestling Federation at Hotmail.com. 916-317-9999. Shoot us a text. Let us know. Let's negotiate. We're open for business. Advertise with us on this show and at all these great live events all over Northern California. We're talking towns like Stockton, Manteca, Sacramento, Clear Lake Oaks, Modesto, and more. I'd have to check the record books, but that might be the longest reigning television champion we've ever had. Led to the ring by Lady Lindsay, C.J. Dirt puts the title on the line here in Manteca, here at the Boys and Girls Club, and he's got no friends in the crowd whatsoever. It's him against everyone, and rightfully so. 
The guy is definitely full of himself, full of piss and vinegar and alcoholic beverages. He's taking his time getting in the ring. He's got a 400 pound opponent and he's got to figure out what to do. These two did meet in singles competition in Stockton, California about a year ago. And CJ found a way to win, but Sapp had to win a battle royal first to earn that TV title shot. This is very different circumstances and could be a very different outcome if you ask this broadcast journalist. I wouldn't take Sap so lightly, Mr. Dirt. This crowd already getting under the skin of the defending champion, CJ Dirt. And you gotta keep your eyes on Lady Lindsay on the outside, looking for any excuse to stick her nose where it doesn't belong. I have to think Samoan Sap though came in with the game plan. And CJ already. We're nine seconds into this thing, CJ. Well, we thank our camera people. Great angles here tonight. There's a collar and elbow. And that is the expected result anytime you walk up with a 400 pound Samoan. For those of you that don't know, Samoan Sap is the nephew of former San Francisco 49er lineman Jesse Sapolu, a legend around these parts. He has the athletic pedigree to succeed in pro wrestling. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, you're gonna get pushed on your ass again. And CJ now doing everything he can. Well, Sap felt it just a little bit. Several right hands to the face. And what a headbutt by the challenger. CJ Dirt already in over his head. There you go. I don't think that's happening. Unsuccessful on several Irish whip attempts. Uh, shoots him into the corner now, very hard. CJ hits those buckles. And smush like a great. Down goes the challenger. This might be a short match. New champion? If he smushes him with that bonsai drop, this thing is done. They're going to have to pick up CJ with a spatula if Sap hits it. Oh, look at Lindsay. Oh, she's spinning his face. Come on. Just enough to distract him. Oh, no. And now Sap tumbles off that second rope. There's the distraction I talked about. There's having that person at ringside to watch your back, and CJ's on the top. Big splash. Only two. What a kick out by Sap and CJ Dirt very nearly stole this thing with a frog splash. Well, Lindsay might have spit some moonshine in his face. I'm not sure. It was tough to tell from this advantage point. Meanwhile, though, Sap falls off that top rope. CJ soars, but unable to secure the three count. And these kids here at the club definitely did not want to see CJ win this thing. Both competitors do a vertical base now. Sap has seen some punishment though. And plows him down with a clothesline. That's all it takes when you're that big and strong. All it takes is one simple offensive maneuver like that. And CJ somehow gets the left shoulder off the canvas. And Sap continues. Oh, look at him. Muscle the big man down. Couldn't do that earlier, but with the punishment that Sack took. No filthy foreigner can beat a real wrestler. 
And now CJ squeezing on Samoan set. Might be a smart strategy. Make him hold your body weight. Make him hold his own body weight. Grind it out. Because every time he attempts something big and strong, Sap throws it back in his face. If you're just joining us, I don't know how that is. We've got a TWF Championship match on tap for our main event. Stephen B. Smith versus Michael Nothing. And one more time, shoved into the corner. Oh, he missed. He missed. Schoolyard trip. And down he goes. And once again, much authority on the kickout by the 400-pound Samoa. He misses, and look at CJ, very smart. Uses Sap's own momentum against him. Down goes the big man, but not quite through it. Now, both individuals have seen some punishment. It's been violent. It's been short. He's telling Sap to stay down. And Sap will not stay down. Begging for his life. Samoan drop. Smushed him. And he barely kicked out. The screams of CJ Dirt did not prevent the Samoan drop. Smushed him. Planted him. Listen to the sound of that impact. That CJ Dirt. You might not like his attitude, but the guy is tougher than a $2 steak. And now Samoan Sap, I think it's time. Oh no, that's a big backside. Oh, here comes Lindsay. You need to stick your nose away from his business. Come on, uh-oh, uh-oh. Drop kick to the back and down goes Lindsay. Sap has an opportunity here. Stick it to Lindsay. Teach her a lesson for sticking her nose in this matchup, for interfering where she shouldn't. Teach her a lesson, Sap. Do what you gotta do. Oh, I think he sees it. Oh, she kicked him. She kicked him between the legs, and Samoan Sap is hurt. Oh, come on. This match has been ruined by the cult of nothing, but here comes outlaw Justin Caton. Here comes the tag team partner of Samoan Sap. Well, Justin Caden, the outlaw, just made a challenge. Well, right here, as Sap was about to give her the old stink face, Lindsay kicked him right between the legs, and then came the cult of nothing. Then came the vultures. The tag team champions had an opportunity to take out Sap, and they jumped on it. Well, are we going to do this? State of confusion out here. Are we get in jail. Belonging to a union to save me 20% at all pro bail bonds. When my buddy called me to bail him out, I went to all pro bail bonds. They give the military a 20% discount. I needed my husband home with us, but I didn't have the money to get him out. That's why I went to all pro bail bonds, because they let me make payments. You never know when you'll need a pro. Call all pro bail bonds, 888-845-BAIL. Offering affordable payment plans plus military and union discounts. ¿Alguien ha sido arrestado? Llame sin compromiso. Nosotros le ayudaremos. Ofrecemos pagos de acuerdo a su presupuesto. No se preocupe más. Nuestros agentes son amables y profesionales. Llame a un experto. Llame a All Pro Bail Bonds. 
Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash the TWF for, to look up any live events, to ask us any questions, to correspond with your favorite TWF. It's the Slam of the Night brought to you by the 2009. <laughs> It's the Slam of the Night, brought to you by the 209 Pro Wrestling Academy. Learn to wrestle. Oh, I'm almost out of breath, and we've still got many, many, many minutes to go. Live Pro Wrestling, June 12, 2021 at the Moose Lodge. 15910 Moose Lodge Lane in Clear Lake Oaks, California. Doors at 6, bell time at 7, 10 bucks online or 12 at the door. $8 for kids. You're going to join us live and in person in Clear Lake Oaks. Great venue, great good time for everyone every single time we go to that town. Then, Summerfest, Live Pro Wrestling, 21 and over. It's at the Pub and Tap House at 1305 North Main Street in Manteca, California. You need to join us for that event. It's outdoors and safe and always a great time in the 209 in Manteca. And then the big one, the big kahuna, the big enchilada. Real Mania Live Pro Wrestling, August 14th, 2021 at the Colonial Theater, 3522 Stockton Boulevard in Sacktown. Doors at 6.30, bell time at 7, 10 bucks online or 15 at the door. It's going to be a great time for everyone for TWF. We are back doing live events. Everyone's getting vaccinated. The world is going back to normal. We love it. Outstep the challengers. Just enough time to go backstage, grab a shot of whiskey, and splash some water on your face. It's a tag team championship matchup. The Vigilance Committee, Outlaw Justin Caton, and Samoan Sam challenge here and now for the tag team titles of this company. It's been a crazy, unpredictable hour. Are you on the gram? Are you on the Instagram? It seems to be the preferred social media destination of that younger generation. Total Wrestling Fed is our handle on Instagram. We invite you to follow us. We invite you to chime in and tell us what you think. Well, later on in this evening, you will see Stephen B. Smith put up the TWF title against Michael Nothing. But as for now... dark and they are violent and they are the tag team champions of this company two young very hungry very accomplished athletes in james von erie and andrew arch plus the brains of the operation the leader michael methley they make a very 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 dangerous trio here in the ranks of the twf Oh, come on, Arch. Are you taking stuff from fans now? Well, already competed tonight in our opening contest did Andrew Arch. Also, moments ago, Samoan Seth had a TV title match ruined by Von Erie and Arch. So how will that affect their performance here this evening? I don't know. 
All I know is the tag titles are on the line. Improvisational matchup here. Justin Caton made the challenge. It was accepted by the cult. A cult of nothing, that is. Let's do it. Talk about two opposite ends of the wrestling spectrum. These two teams could not be any more different. Power. <laughs> There's a tension in the air. I can cut it with a knife. They do not like each other one bit. What heels? Very interesting, though. I'd have to say, they're younger and they're lighter. So the longer this match goes, the more it should favor the defending champions, the Cult of Nothing. However, if Samoan Sap and Justin Caton want to win these titles, they have to make it short and explosive, in my humble opinion. Big time power moves, big time opportunities to hit those big moves within the first five or 10 minutes. Because if it goes longer than that, the Colt has a serious, serious advantage. They're not carrying as much body weight. They've teamed together more in the past. Who wears a skirt to the ring? Well, Michael Nothing's going to babysit those tag titles, apparently. Samoan Sap's going to start this thing. Very surprised by that, since he already had a TV title match earlier in this hour. This was not on my format. This was not planned. This was not scheduled. This happened because of the interference of the Colt in Sapp's last match. Well, James Von Erie, fresh as a daisy, has not competed yet here tonight, and that could come to their advantage. It's officially started. So really, in reality, every title will be on the line in this hour. You're getting bonus title matches. You have to take your time. Normally, James Von Erie might attack the guy, go after him to start a matchup, to start fast, to start hot. He is taking his time staring across the ring at a 400-pound Samoan. Oh, what a shot. Samoan Sap shakes it off. Running start, and Samoan Sap still shakes it off. James Von Erie a little befuddled by the ability of Sap. And it's like running into a brick wall. You see those baseball players in the outfield that lose track. And the fly ball and runs straight into the fence. That's exactly what happened to James Von Erie. And now Andrew Arch, who does have experience against Sapp in the past. One more stiff forearm. That has to be. He felt that one. That has to be the strategy of the Cult of Nothing. Several shots thus far. There's no flying head scissors. There's no hurricane runners. This is just a straight fight between two tag teams that absolutely hate each other. Oh. And Andrew Arch going to town. Sap definitely felt that. Puts a thumb in the eye and gets himself the advantage here. Trying to chop down that big redwood tree. And Samoan Sap definitely felt that onslaught moments ago by Andrew Arch. And here comes the outlaw. Probably the most experienced in the wrestling business out of all these people. He was selling out towns in the Sacramento area about 20 years ago. Lots of power. Former Olympic trials wrestler. And the outlaw now getting shoved in the corner. Oh, he went after his eyeballs. He can't see. There's a kick to the thigh muscle, and the outlaw being chopped down by Andrew Arch. Nice strategy. Rip his eyeballs out and then kick him in the knee. Andrew Arch knows he's given up a lot of power. He's given up a lot of body weight. 
Spinebuster. Retaliation by the Outlaw. And very nearly had new tag team champions. I alluded to that earlier. The challengers, with all that size, with all that strength, need some big power moves. They need to win this thing as quick as possible. Because if it keeps going, the champions have an advantage. Oh, he missed in the corner there. Went for some sort of splash in the corner. And Andrew Arch able to sidestep the contact. Oh, look at this. Von Erie choking the life out of the outlaw. Right behind the referee's back, the cult of nothing is like a well-oiled machine of cheating. Listen to these kids screaming at the referee. A well-oiled cheating machine is the cult of nothing. Not a whole lot of honor in that, but I guess you find success. They are the reigning tag team champions for a reason. Dethroned Famous Inc. about a year ago. Oh, running knee to the face. And down goes Cowboy. Down goes the outlaw, Justin Caton. And he's not moving. He's hurt. His eyes are glazed over. These kids would love to see the Vigilance Committee make some history. Oh, double DDT. Only two. Despite the tandem offense moments ago, not a three count. One more very, very long two count, but Justin Caton doing what he can. Talk about a stiff knee to the neck and head area. Followed by a double DDT by the reigning champions. Well, unable to get a three count, but definitely sapping all the strength out of the outlaw. Whittling away. And now squeezing on him. More and more pressure applied. He needs to make a tag in the worst way. That's been some heavy duty punishment the past several minutes by the defending champions. And they're doing a smart thing though. They're keeping the fresh man in the ring at all times. When one guy starts to lose his breath, even just a little bit, they make that timely tag. Very smart by the defending champions. Now Andrew Arch with the attack. Andrew Arch thinking second rope now. Big splash! And Samoan Sap hops in the ring and makes sure that they don't get a three count, but Justin Caton is barely moving. Justin Caton, ever since taking that knee to the side of the head, Justin Caton has not been the same guy. Well, there's a shot, a shot to the skull, got himself just a little bit of daylight. And he makes the tag. He makes the tag to the big Samoan. Here come, oh no, Samoan Sap tried to step through the ropes and took a boot to the skull for his troubles. And now Von Erie didn't even let him get in the ring and clean house, didn't even let him get in the ring to try to take the advantage back for his particular side. And now the challengers are both down and both in trouble. Drop kick and Samoan Sap is in trouble. Justin Caton has not gotten up. Justin Caton might have a concussion on the side of the ring after taking that knee to the skull a few minutes ago. It might be two on one right now, unfortunately for Samoan Sap. Well, I've done some dumb things in my day, but trying to Irish whip a Samoan who's 400 pounds isn't one of them. Oh, Avalanche. Avalanche in the corner, and Von Erie is on Dream Street. Oh, but he fell in the right direction. After taking that splash in the corner, Von Erie fell into his own corner and got very lucky to tag his partner. Or did he? I guess he didn't. He fell pretty close, but it looks like Justin Caton still trying to collect his... Collect his thoughts on the outside. He might have a concussion. Oh, boy. Samoan drop. I thought he had made a tag moments ago. He did not. Oh, 
and he very nearly won the tag titles. Listen to the sound of the impact. How many of you out there have been dropped down by a 400 pound Samoan? A very long two count, but not quite three. In that particular instance, Sap now to his feet. Oh no, and Sap was going to see if his partner was okay. Meanwhile, Andrew Arch is now the legal entity in the ring, and Andrew Arch with the chop block moments ago. What the hell is that? Steel chair to the spine. Good God. Super kick. Oh, come on. And the cult of nothing retained the tag titles. Was a steel chair to the spine and a super kick that did in a Samoan set that had already competed in an earlier matchup here tonight after a knee to the skull concussed his partner and put him out of this matchup the cult of nothing jump on every single opportunity and keep the tag titles here this evening by hook or by crook right here look at this Tied up with the referee was Andrew Arch. Steel chair to the spine of Samoan Sap. And then, super kick right between the eyes. He was on rubber legs. Down he goes, one, two, three. Tonight was not the night. The stars did not align for the Vigilance Committee, unfortunately, and the Cult of Nothing have kept the tag titles. That man, might, that man needs to see a doctor right away. I'm pretty sure he has a concussion after taking that knee to the skull moments ago. And now Michael Nothing and the Colt get to celebrate a victory, but not for long. Just throwing this out there. If you don't take your seats, I will have every single one of you thrown out. And also, can we have someone get this garbage out of the ring? My match is next. My championship match is next. Can we get someone to clear the ring? I thought I was the one that did commentary. Apparently Michael Nothing is the new color man, is the new play-by-play -play man. He gets to talk every second, right? Is that what you do, Michael Nothing? Try to hijack our show? Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. No BS, no commercials, no plugs for upcoming shows. Let's do the title match and let's do it right now. Two of the very best in this company to ever step foot in this company, battle for the title here and now. Steven Beast Smith versus Michael Nothing, both trained by Mike Modest. Over a decade ago, trained together, 
went up these roads together. We're the best of friends for many, many, many years. That friendship is out the window. They have spent the last several years hating each other's guts. Michael Nothing formed a posse. He formed a group. He formed a cult that he calls the Cult of Nothing. Stephen B. Smith stands alone. He is a man who is going to stand on his own two feet and defend his TWF championship. You can see him limping. He's been battling a very tough ankle issue. But do you see him complaining? Do you see him whining? No. You see him defending his title here and now. I've been doing this broadcast thing for 23 years. We started in 1998. Humble beginnings. But it's matches like this that still give me goosebumps. Steven Beast Smith holds that title with pride and with honor. Well, here's, here's the graphic. Here you go. Here you go. Steven B. Smith versus Michael Nothing for the TWF Championship main event on TV here and now. Well, to quote my father, let's do the damn thing. The Boys and Girls Club in Manteca, California. It's been an amazing, crazy, unpredictable night of action. And this, my friends, is our main event. I watch these two athletes. Yes, we're in Manteca, California. I watch these two athletes train together over a decade ago. I was there for every single one of them. There were nights where it was just the trainer, Mike Modest, and these two men together. Three people putting their heads together to succeed in pro wrestling. Two men learned everything they possibly could, soaked it in like sponges, and I'm very honored and privileged to give you this title match here and now. Really? I make a heartfelt speech like that and Michael Nothing's got to stop things to remove clothing. I'm trying to make it sound good. I'm trying to make it sound epic. I respect the hell out of both these guys. Michael Nothing, though, geez, it's getting harder and harder with every single matchup. Well, it was Michael Nothing who has been TWF champion many times over, over the years. However, since starting this cult of nothing several months ago, the title has eluded him. Tonight is a golden opportunity to take the title, to grab the brass ring, if you will, and become the champion of this company. Now, here we go, Beast, obviously the stronger of the two, muscles him into the corner. Michael Nothing, definitely faster, but not by a whole lot. Definitely more nimble on his feet, but not really by that much. One more time. Fireman's carry takeover by the defending champion. Challenger, though, quick to retaliate. <laughs> they know each other so well. They've got counters for counters for counters when it comes to pro wrestling. And these people of Manteca firmly, be firmly behind Stephen B. Smith. He's got that left arm. He's got control of it. Shot to the face, breaks the hole. 
Oh, and what a right hand by the defending champion. Sends him down. Is he trying to win this thing already? He utilizes the top rope Haley's common elbow. A little premature though, and Michael Nothing is out of there. Takes a timeout on the outside. Rolls out of trouble. That right hand was something to behold. Oh, right here, look at this. Wow! What a right hand. Good God Almighty! Michael Nothing is counting his teeth, making sure that they're all still in his head. And Beast is sick of this BS, sick of this stalling, stalking his prey on the outside, if you will. And nothing's back in, and then nothing's back out. First class mind games by the challenger. Doing everything he can to make the champion work for it. Oh, and attacks him on the outside. What a shot. And both these athletes want to leave this building. TWF champion, only one can. Oh, chest first. One more shot to the anatomy of Michael Nothing, and he walks away to try to get some distance. Try to avoid pain and punishment just for a minute. One more time, and Michael Nothing is being absolutely brutalized by the defending champion. Uh-oh. And Michael Nothing hops in the ring. He is not going to let 123 little kids beat the hell out of him. All right here, look at this. Like a cockroach when you turn the lights on, Michael Nothing scrambled back inside the ring. Was not a lot... <laughs> Not about to get beat up by the entire roster of the Boys and Girls Club. Oh, talk about taking an opportunity. Kicks the ropes into his balls. Oh, beautiful move by the challenger. Drop toe hold, puts him into the corner. And then a drop kick to the small of the back. And now Michael Nothing has taken control back. Michael Nothing utilizing that ring, utilizing every inch of that ring to his advantage. And now Beast is reeling on the outside. Foot across the throat moments ago. Look at this. Oh, he grabbed his waist and dropped his face into the turnbuckles. Then a drop kick to the small of the back. Nice follow-up by the challenger. And now he is controlling and dictating every single thing that's happening. Kick right to the jaw, and down goes the champion. Big time elbow right to the heart. Here's a cover. A beast. Finds a way to kick out, but every time you kick out, you expend energy. Every time you have to push a guy off you, it takes something. You can see him visibly limping on the inside now. Series of forearms by the challenger. Oh, what a shot! Michael Nothing means business. Michael Nothing will do absolutely anything he can to leave this building as the champion. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, what a buckle bomb! Power bomb into the corner, and the challenger is hurt. What a retaliation. What a comeback by the champion. Look at this. He knows he's in trouble right about here. 
Wow! Buckle bomb, power bomb into the corner, and Michael, nothing is hurt. Beast is holding that often injured ankle. Every step he takes has got to hurt. Every movement has got to hurt. But Michael, nothing. Still on the canvas. And Beast now, if he plants him with that top rope elbow, this thing is definitely done. And once again, Michael Nothing. He's got a wrestling IQ. He knows everywhere to be at the right times. He knows how to utilize the ropes and the turnbuckles and every inch of the ring to his advantage. Oh, what a shot. Especially when he's in the ring with a more explosive athlete, a stronger athlete than he is. Oh, eats a size 12. Here we go. And sticks out the knee, and once again, Beast is hurt. Super kick, and down goes the champion. Long, long two count, not quite three. Oh, there's the first mistake. And there's the super kick by the challenger. Definitely floored the champion, but not enough. Barely not enough to beat the guy. Now Michael Nothing can smell it. Michael Nothing can taste the title. Michael Nothing doing anything he can to finish off Beast and leave this building with that 10 pounds of gold. Moonsault! Spectacular moonsault! And still just a two count. What athleticism displayed by the challenger, unable to get a three count. Gorgeous moonsault, only two. Most individuals in wrestling would have been done. That would have been curtains over one, two, three. Stephen B. Smith is not most individuals in wrestling. Drop kick to the chest. Temporarily slows the champion. And now here's the challenger. It's come to the point he's thrown everything at him. Just some punches to the face. The simplicity and the violence. Forearm shiver. He's going to try it again. And B shoves him off. Stronger opponent, bigger opponent. Trying to get some blood flowing through those veins. Trying to come back now. And Michael Nothing thwarts it. A third time, perhaps. Here we go. And look at Beast come back. What a shot. Dory. Gory special. Into a cutter. Gory special into a cutter. Pin that man. Kick to the stomach. And a boot to the face. Just when you think he's going to hit that clothesline to the back of the skull. Michael Nothing. Stretch him out, then drop him on his face. Sounds like a good strategy to me. Unfortunately for Beast, he ate that spin kick. And then that boot to the side of the skull. Both men have seen their fair share of punishment. TWF Championship being contested before your very eyes right now. Only one man can leave this building the champion. They've both been leaving it all out there in the squared circle. Beast is visibly injured. What a shot. One more time and Michael Nothing absolutely dominating the defending champion. Uh-oh. One more time. Well, here's a double underhook. Oh, Beast launches him. Dumps him on his face. 
King of Mangus, clothesline to the back of the skull. Michael Nothing is not moving. Michael Nothing is down. Paley's Comet Elbow. Winner. Stephen B. Smith finds a way to counter the double underhook. Gets himself some space, blocks any offense, dumps him on his face. Kanga Mangus, big elbow. and keeps the title in spectacular fashion. Well, these kids in Manteca, California are gonna go home happy. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week.